160 years ago today, President Abraham Lincoln wired a telegram to his most important general, George McClellan. In this letter, he offered some very blunt and direct military advice. In this video, Miles and I will share the contents of that letter. Which is quite fascinating and a great point to discuss the roles that both presidents, Lincoln and Davis, played in the campaign. Both leaders were deeply involved in the day-to-day -day management and oversight of the American Civil War. Admirers might call them hands-on, while detractors might rightly call them micromanagers. In the case of Jefferson Davis, the Confederate president, his involvement feels understandable. Davis was, after all, a soldier. He studied at West Point Military Academy, served under General Zachary Taylor, and he fought with distinction in the Mexican-American War. He saw direct combat in that war and was wounded in action. And Davis had deep political experience to lean on, both as a congressman and as a former U.S. Secretary of War. The case of Abraham Lincoln is the more curious and interesting one. Lincoln is almost the polar opposite of Davis. He has no military experience and barely any formal education at all. He attended school up until the age of 15, only sporadically. Lincoln did serve as a militia captain in the Black Hawk War. <laughs> okay, but I think when we compare that to Davis, we can consider Lincoln's practical military experience about zero. Very fair. And yet, despite a lack of military experience, formal education, and any long background in politics, Lincoln inserted himself often into military affairs. And what makes this so interesting and juicy is that Lincoln's military advice during the campaign is shockingly good. Case in point, Here's a telegram Lincoln wired McClellan on April 7th with the Army of the Potomac stalled in front of Yorktown. They will probably use time as advantageously as you can. You will do me the justice to remember I always insisted that going down the bay in search of a field instead of fighting at or near Manassas was only shifting and not surmounting a difficulty, that we would find the same enemy and the same or equal entrenchments at either place. I have never written to you or spoken to you in greater kindness of feeling than now. But you must act. Yours truly, Abraham Lincoln. This letter, written by a man with no meaningful military experience, hits the nail right on the head. It does, and that letter would not be the first or the last time that President Lincoln gave McClellan very good military counsel. The president could see that McClellan was essentially blinking in front of Yorktown when the correct answer was to attack rapidly. And true to form, McClellan did blink on April 7th. He wrote to Washington this very day. All the prisoners state that General Johnson arrived in Yorktown yesterday with strong reinforcements. It seems clear that I shall have the whole force of the enemy on my hands, probably not less than 100,000 men and possibly more. My force is possibly less than that of the enemy. And remember, just days ago, McClellan had been told that he was facing 15,000 Confederate mm -hmm. troops, and now, today, he's wiring Washington that suddenly it's 100,000. And the source of that information was from prisoners who were cleverly coached by Magruder to lie about the size of the force in a brilliant really attempt to fool McClellan. And so, on April 7th, McClellan appears ready to halt his advance across the entire peninsula and dig in for a siege against the advice of President Lincoln. It's a siege that will last the entire month of April, and in the coming weeks we'll explore what happened in the two, with the two armies and why McC McClellan settled into this protracted, ill-advised siege in the first place. We'll also pay a visit to the Confederate White House for a monumental and contentious war council between Jefferson Davis and his top generals. So hit that subscribe button and join us to never miss an update on our On to Richmond series.